Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we're going to assemble an Ender 3 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back! Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling and other 3D printing related stuff, Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to assemble an Ender 3 3D printer, but this is not the Creality Ender 3, this is the SaneSmart Ender 3, which as far as I can tell is exactly the same as the Creality Ender 3. I bought this from Woot.com back in July of 2019 for about 150 bucks, and it has literally been sitting in a box behind me since I received it. I have an Ender 3 Pro that I've had for a little over a year, so I wanted to see what the Ender 3 Not Pro was like, and that's why I bought this. And I've been busy with other videos, and I just haven't had a chance to get to this one. But I finally made some time, and so here we are, about to put this printer together. Keep in mind that I only paid 150 bucks for this thing, so I'm really not sure what to expect, but I do want to see what a $150 3D printer can do. So, let's get this box opened up and get everything out. Okay, so here is everything that was in the box, out of the box. There's the LCD screen and control panel. There's the base of the printer, which is already assembled, and the X carriage with the hot end is connected to it by a cable. There's the power supply and the power cord. There's the roller bracket and the extruder bracket, which are part of the X-axis gantry. There's the X-axis belt tensioner. There's the Z-axis stepper motor and the Z-axis limit switch module. There's the Z-axis lead screw. There's the spool holder. And there are the aluminum extrusions, which will form the uprights and the aluminum extrusions, which will form the top crossbar and the X-axis gantry. There are end caps to snap onto the top crossbar to provide a more finished look. There's the X-axis belt. There are also various screws, washers, and T-nuts required to hold the printer together, and there is a kit of tools that you will use for assembly, maintenance, and everyday printing. So now that we've got everything out of the box, let's start putting this printer together. Step 1. Attach the uprights. This step requires the Ender 3 base assembly along with the left and right vertical extrusions and four M5 by 45 screws and washers. These are the longest screws in the kit. The left side extrusion has two holes at the bottom, while the right side extrusion has two holes in one of the slots. First, we'll attach the left vertical extrusion with two of the M5 by 45 screws. When attaching the left vertical extrusion, make sure that the two holes are closest to the Ender 3 base assembly. Then we'll attach the right vertical extrusion with the other two M5 by 45 screws. When attaching the right vertical extrusion, make sure the two holes are closer to the base assembly and on the inboard side, that is, closer to the build platform. Step 2. Attach the control panel and power supply. This step requires the Ender 3 base assembly, the control panel assembly, and the power supply. You'll need two M5 by 8 screws to attach the control panel and two M4 by 20 screws to attach the power supply. First, insert the M4 by 20 screws into the holes on the right vertical extrusion. You'll see that these screws align with screw holes in the side of the power supply. Tighten the screws to secure the power supply to the extrusion. And while you're in the area, look around the back of the power supply and make sure that the voltage selector switch is set to match your mains power voltage. Next, plug the rainbow ribbon cable into port 3 on the back of the control panel assembly. Then attach the control panel assembly to the front of the printer using the two M5 by 8 screws. Step 3. Attach the Z-axis limit switch module. This step requires the Ender 3 base assembly and the Z-axis limit switch module. The module has two screws and T-nuts already in place. This module attaches to the bottom left vertical extrusion. Plug the module in. Most of the cables are marked with a small clip which has a letter on it. 
locate the 3-pin cable marked Z and plug it into the Z-axis limit switch module. The cable's connector is keyed, so it only fits one way. The module is held in place by two screws and T-nuts. T-nuts are designed to fit into the slots of the aluminum extrusions and as you tighten them, they rotate 90 degrees to grip the slots. Loosen the screws securing the T-nuts. Attach the module by tightening the screws. Make sure the T-nuts rotate and grip the slots as you do so. The exact placement of the Z-axis limit switch module isn't critical at this time. We'll adjust it later. Step 4. Attach the Z-axis stepper motor. This step requires the Ender 3 base assembly, the Z-axis stepper motor, the Z-axis lead screw, and two M4 by 18 p screws. Locate the 4-pin cable marked Z and plug that into the Z-axis stepper motor. The cable's connector is keyed, so it only fits one way. Insert the two M4 by 18 p screws into the plastic bracket on the stepper motor. Then attach the stepper motor to the left vertical extrusion. The screws align with two holes in the extrusion. Now don't over tighten the screws. You want them snug so that the motor doesn't wiggle, but they don't need to be much tighter than that. Insert the Z-axis lead screw into the coupler on the Z-axis stepper motor. Tighten the screw on the coupler to clamp the lead screw in place. Step 5. Attach the extruder assembly to the X-axis gantry. This step requires the extruder assembly, two M4 by 16 screws and washers, and the X-axis gantry arm. The screws can be a little tricky to insert because they go in between these two metal plates. The screws align with two holes in the extrusion and there's an area drilled out of the extrusion to make room for a large screw head that's part of the assembly. So insert the screws into the extruder assembly, align the screws with the holes, making sure the drilled out area aligns with the existing screw head on the extruder assembly, then tighten the screws keeping the extrusion parallel with the top edge of the extruder assembly. There are holes in the rear plate which allow a hex driver to reach the screw heads. Step 6. Attach the X carriage and roller bracket to the X gantry. This step requires the X gantry, the X carriage and hot end assembly which is attached to the base, the roller bracket, and two M4 by 16 screws and washers. Slide the X carriage and hot end assembly onto the X gantry. The hot end assembly should be on the opposite side of the X gantry from the extruder stepper motor. Using the two M4 by 16 screws, attach the roller bracket to the X gantry. Step 7. Attach the X axis belt to the X carriage. This step requires the X gantry and the X axis belt. The ends of the belt have brass retainers crimped onto them. Slide one end of the belt through the front cover on the extruder assembly, around the tooth gear on the X axis stepper motor, and back through the cover. You'll need to make sure that the teeth on the belt are facing the teeth on the gear. There is a slot which holds the belt, and the retainer on the end of the belt keeps it from being pulled out. Pass the other end of the belt under the wheels on the X carriage so that the belt is inside the slot in the extrusion. I found that it's easiest to simply roll the X carriage over the crimp on the end of the belt. Pull the belt around the other side of the extrusion and hook it onto the other side of the X carriage. Step 8. Attach the X axis belt tensioner to the X gantry. This step requires the X gantry and the X axis belt tensioner. Like the Z-axis limit switch module, the belt tensioner has two screws and T-nuts on it. So, loosen the screws just a bit so you can get the T-nuts into the front slot on the X gantry. Loop the belt over the pulley on the belt tensioner. Begin tightening the screws which will rotate the T-nuts 90 degrees and allow them to grip the inside of the slot, but don't tighten them all the way down yet. Leave them loose enough that you can just slide the tensioner. Using the small wrench as a lever, apply force to the tensioner to tighten the belt. Then tighten the screws to hold the tensioner in place. I've found that a slight downward angle on the tensioner can keep the belt from rubbing on the ends of the extrusion. 
Step 9. Attach the X gantry and the top cross beam to the printer. This step requires the X gantry, the top cross beam, four M5 by 25 screws and washers, two plastic end caps, and the Ender 3 base assembly. Slide the X gantry roller brackets over the vertical aluminum extrusions, inserting the Z axis lead screw into the brass nut on the extruder bracket. The extruder bracket should be toward the rear of the printer, and the X carriage and hot end assembly should be toward the front of the printer. Each roller bracket has one adjustable wheel. The wheel is adjusted by turning an eccentric nut. Rotating the nut will move the wheel closer to the extrusion for half of a rotation and away from the extrusion for the other half of a rotation. If one wheel bracket or the other seems too tight to fit over the extrusions, use the wrench to adjust the eccentric nut for a looser fit. With the X gantry in place on the two vertical extrusions, attach the top cross beam. Insert two M4 by 25 screws on each side of the cross beam. The holes are drilled out larger on the top of the cross beam to accommodate the screw heads. Secure the cross beam to the vertical extrusions. As you tighten the screws, ensure that the cross beam is aligned with the edges of the vertical extrusions. Then attach the plastic end caps to the exposed sides of the top cross beam. Step 10. Attach the spool holder. This step requires the spool holder bracket, tube, and nut, two M5 by 8 screws, and two M5 T-nuts. Insert the M5 by 8 screws into the spool holder bracket and thread the two M5 T-nuts onto them. Secure the spool holder bracket to the top cross beam by tightening the M5 by 8 screws. Ensure that the T-nuts rotate 90 degrees to grip the inside of the slot. Attach the spool holder tube to the spool holder bracket using the spool holder nut. Step 11. Connect the Bowden tube. This step requires the extruder pressure fitting, one small collet clip, and one large collet clip. On the hot end assembly, attach the large collet clip to keep the retaining ring locked. This will be a snug fit, so be careful not to break the collet clip. Thread the extruder pressure fitting to the output side of the extruder assembly and tighten it with the wrench. Insert the Bowden tube fully into the extruder pressure fitting and attach the small collet clip to keep the retaining ring locked. Step 12. Connect the power supply and the motors. Plug the XT60 connector from the power supply into the XT60 connector for the electronics box in the printer's base. A ribbon cable with three connectors extends from the electronics box. Each of the connectors is marked with a small clip, which has a letter on it. Plug the three-pin connector marked X into the X-axis limit switch located inside the cover on the left front side of the X gantry. Plug the four-pin connector marked X into the X-axis stepper motor, located on the left rear side of the X gantry. Plug the four-pin connector marked E into the extruder stepper motor, located on the extruder bracket. This completes the assembly of the printer, but now we need to make a couple of adjustments. We're going to adjust the Z-axis limit module. First, adjust the four build plate knobs so that the springs are compressed about three-quarters of the way. Turning the knobs in a counterclockwise direction as viewed from above will lower the build plate and compress the springs. Loosen the screws on the Z-axis limit switch module and move it to its lowest position. Move the bed toward the rear of the printer and move the X carriage toward the left side of the X gantry as viewed from the front. Manually turn the coupling on the Z-axis stepper motor to lower the X gantry. Bring it down until the nozzle is within a millimeter of the build plate. Adjust the height of the Z-axis limit switch module until you hear the switch click. Then tighten the screws securing the module. Plug the printer in and turn it on. Once the printer boots to the idle screen, press the knob to enter the menus. Select Prepare, then select Auto Home. This will move the X, Y, and Z axes to their home positions. This means the build plate moves toward the rear of the printer, the X carriage toward the left of the printer, and the nozzle toward the build plate. 
verify that the nozzle comes to rest about a millimeter above the build plate. Adjust the position of the Z-axis limit switch module if necessary, and home the printer again. Now it's time to adjust the build plate to nozzle distance, also known as leveling the bed. The idea here is to ensure that when the nozzle is at its lowest level, it's close enough to the build plate that you can just fit a sheet of paper between the two with a bit of friction. The usual way to do this is to home the printer and then manually move the X carriage in the bed to position the nozzle over each of the four adjustment screws so you can make that adjustment. But the problem with that method is repeatability with regard to making sure that you always get the nozzle at the exact same spot over the screws. Also, you have to turn off the stepper motors while doing this, and that means the Z-axis stepper motor can move, which sort of defeats the purpose. So what I like to do is use a G-code file created by my friend Peter Solomon at Wham Bam Systems. It moves the nozzle to each adjustment screw in turn, and then to the center of the bed so you can verify that everything's good. And it makes four passes around the bed, going a little faster each time. Multiple passes are important because as you adjust one corner, it also affects the others, so you need to make multiple trips to make sure you've got it adjusted properly. And the whole process takes less than four minutes. So I've copied this G-code file to the micro SD card included with the printer, and I've got a link to that file in the description. Let's insert the card and instruct the printer to print it. As it goes, I'm adjusting each point to ensure that there's a bit of friction, but not so much that I can't push and pull the sheet of paper under the nozzle. As it comes back around to make additional passes, the adjustments become more precise. You may need to loosen points that you tightened on a previous pass because, as I mentioned a moment ago, adjustments on one corner affect the others. And it's done. You can run this whenever you need to adjust the bed. Now, this gets you pretty close to the final setting. You may need to make very minor adjustments as you're starting to print to make sure that the filament is getting the right amount of squish. You want it to stick, but you don't want it to be ground into the build surface. With adjustments complete, let's load some filament and print something out. Turn the printer on and set the nozzle to the working temperature of the filament you're planning to use. Mount the spool on the spool holder and take hold of the end of the filament. Loading filament can sometimes require a little bit of skill, because a lot of times the filament wants to stay curved like it was on the spool. And this is where those blue handled flush cutters come in handy. I usually cut an angle on the end of the filament, like this, so that it forms a point. In rare cases, this isn't good enough, so I need to make a second cut on the other side, so it's a bit more like the roof of a house. And in extreme cases, even that isn't good enough, so I need to make four cuts, which kind of looks like the pointy end of a nail. But start with one cut and work your way up if you need to. Now, with a point on the end of the filament, press the loading lever on the extruder and insert the filament. While keeping the lever pressed in, push the filament into the extruder. Push it all the way down into the hot end until you see filament starting to be pushed out of the heated nozzle. Congratulations, you've got filament loaded. So since the Ender 3 Pro and the Ender 3 are essentially the same beast, files sliced for one will print just fine on the other. They have the same hot end, the same filament feed system, and the same build volume. The manual included with the printer has instructions for setting up the Cura slicer but I like using Prusa Slicer. That's right, you can use Prusa Slicer with non-Prusa printers, and I've got a video about how to set that up for the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro linked in the description. So I've already got a profile set up in Prusa Slicer to support the Ender 3, and I've sliced a 3D Benchy because that's what we do with our 3D printers. We print little boats. Occasionally we print other things, but mostly it's little boats. So I'll print one out. That's done, so let's get that off the printer. And just like that, I have added another vessel to my own personal navy. Speaking of navies, I heard that the Norwegian Navy has started painting barcodes on the sides of their ships. That way, when the ships return to port, they can scan the navy in. This print came out pretty good. Actually, really good when you consider that the printer only cost 150 bucks. I've seen worse prints from more expensive printers. Now, one thing I will say about this printer is that it's not a quiet beast. 
On the Ender 3 Pro, the power supply is fan, only turns on when the power supply wants a breath of fresh air. On this Ender 3, the power supply fan is on all the time. It gets irritating. And the hot end fan seems a little louder than the one on the Ender 3 Pro, but that may just be my imagination. The stepper motors don't seem any louder than on the Ender 3 Pro, so it's got that going for it. Now, a few things that I'm probably going to want to do to this printer over time will probably involve replacing the power supply with a quieter one, installing the Creality Silent Board to quiet down the stepper motors, and adding a quieter fan for the hot end, either a Noctua or something similar. If I use a Noctua, I'm going to have to use a buck converter to step the voltage down. The Ender 3 is a 24 volt printer, and for whatever reason, Noctua doesn't make 24 volt fans. But apart from the noise level, this seems to be just as good as my Ender 3 Pro. It appeared on Wood a few more times in the last several months, and at that same $150 price tag. Right now you can get a Creality Ender 3 for $190 on Creality's site, and for some weird reason the Ender 3s are in the $230 to $240 range on Amazon. So we've built an Ender 3, and we've gotten it adjusted, and we've printed yet another tiny little boat. Thanks for making it all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. Now don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any cool 3D printing stuff. If you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down, but either way, please share your thoughts down in the comments. If you like the content I'm producing and you want to help out, check out the description for ways you can do that. Shopping using the Amazon affiliate link really helps no matter what you're buying, and heck, even just subscribing is a great way to support the channel and help keep me making videos for you. Well, now that I've got this Ender 3 all put together, I'm going to go print something cool. You do the same, and I'll see you next time.